April 1st, 2016 was the day that I fired my job. Now, was it scary? Yes, but was it worth it? Well, I've made over seven figures online in my business with just one digital product doing a little over 900K. So I like to think that it was worth it. And in this video, I'm gonna just give you the step-by-step -step blueprint to where you can fire your job. And I like to say fire your job instead of quit your job, because you know, I ain't no quitter. I didn't quit my job. I fired them up. Now, let me start this video by saying I, Aston CEO, am not anti-job because a lot of people seem to think that I'm anti-job. No, I'm pro-entrepreneur. If you love your job, I'm happy for you. You figured out being happy in life. But for those entrepreneurs and those aspiring entrepreneurs out there, those ones that know that they have something within them, those ones that want to live life on their own terms instead of doing what somebody else tells them to do all the time. This is for you. So if you love your job, enjoy your job and click off this and go watch the cat video or something, right? But look, like I said, I found my job April 1st, 2016, right? And the importance of this and why I remember this date, not because it was a monument in my life, but it's because I made a decision that on this date, it was going to be the last day that I ever worked for somebody again in my entire life. This is what you need to do first of all, before anything else, you need to make a decision to do it. Now I tell people this all the time, and this is so crucial to any and everything that you want to do in life, especially when it comes to your goals, your dreams, and your aspirations, especially in entrepreneurship, you need to make a decision instead of making a choice. Most people, they're out here making choices. And the difference is this, when you make choices, you have options. A decision is definitive. There's no other option to that. So I don't have a plan B. My plan B. It's just another way to make my plan A work, right? I drew a line in the sand, I made a decision and I was willing to literally die behind that decision. So April 1st, 2016, I said, that is going to be the day that I fire my job no matter what happens. So the first step is that you need to pick a date. You need to pick a date. What is the date going to be for you? And write it down somewhere and write it down somewhere to where as you can see it each and every single day. This day, April 1st, 2016, I wrote it down in my notebook. I wrote it down on my bathroom mirror. I wrote it down on a little post-it sticky note and I stuck it on my sun visor in my car. So even when I'm not thinking about it, I just happen to pull down my sun visor. I see that date, April 1st, 2016. I put it as my screensaver in my phone. No matter what, this is the last day that I'm working. I started to brainwash myself because I needed to get my subconscious mind on board with my conscious mind. Because here's the thing about your mind and your brain. Look, if this is your conscious mind, everything that you're conscious of, your subconscious right here, this part right here is really running everything. But the thing about your subconscious mind is that it has absolutely no reasoning ability. It believes what you tell it. The problem is, is that most people were just always telling it the wrong shit. So why not just flip it and start telling it the right stuff, right? And when I say it has no reasoning ability, it doesn't know what is real and what is fake. That's why dreams feel so real. That's why placebos work, right, in medicine. That's why when you're a kid, you can wake up and have a wet dream and just be Am I, am I talking too much? Maybe maybe I was the only one that had that, had that experience as a child, but my brain thought it was real at the time. It, it was like, everything was super real, right? Your subconscious, it, it has no reasoning ability. And I'll give you a test right here just to prove it. Really just close your eyes right now and imagine yourself, like really imagine yourself biting into a lemon, like envision it. You see how your mouth starts to get watery? Your mind, your subconscious, it doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not. So me showing it this date all the time, it's getting on board with me and it's getting on board with my goals and it's saying like, okay, April 1st, 2016, I'm an entrepreneur. But after you've set a date for yourself and you've told yourself that this is what you are actually do so you can get your subconscious on mind, what you need to do is that you need to calculate your freedom number. You need to calculate your freedom number. And this is big. A lot of people, they have goals 
of quitting their job or firing their job, being their own boss, right? A lot of people, they have an aspiration to do this, but nobody knows what their freedom number is. They don't, they don't know how much money it costs to buy their freedom. Because here's the thing, if you haven't realized it by now, freedom ain't free. You gotta pay for it, right? So your freedom number is this. What I call your freedom number is having anywhere between six to 12 months of expenses saved up. Six to 12 months of expenses. And when I say expenses, I mean literally every single expense. So don't just think of your bills. If you like to go eat Chipotle once a week, save up to where you can still go and eat Chipotle once a week. I mean, every single expense. And the reason why you want to do this is because over a six to 12 month period, over six months to a year, if you don't make a single dollar, you will know that your lifestyle is not going to change. And your sole purpose is to do any and everything possible that's legal to get to your freedom number. So me, for instance, I had a $10 a week lunch budget. As crazy as that sounds, I had a $10 a week lunch budget. I can remember what I ate every single day for lunch. I had Chef Boyardee. <laughs> and the reason why I got Chef Boyardee, it sounds stupid now, but I was I was trying to get some variety because it's like, oh, Chef Boyardee, they got ravioli, they got SpaghettiOs, they got spaghetti and meatballs, they got the alphabet stuff. Guess what? It all tastes the same. But I will bring a can of Chef Boyardee I will bring some type of fruit, some type of cheap fruit. It will typically be either bananas or grapes and a pack of lemon cookies. I don't know if you, you ever had the lemon cookies, like it might've been at your granny's house or something. It was like a huge, super big pack of like 10,000 lemon cookies and it was super cheap. <laughs> that would be my lunch every single day. And I would drive to a Chick-fil-A up the street and sit in the parking lot of the Chick-fil-A and I would just be plotting what I'm gonna do each and every single day. My coworkers were like, why don't you ever eat lunch with us in the break room? Do you not like us? I was like, hell no. I'm like, y'all, I'm plotting on my escape out of here. Except for two people, that was pretty cool. Jamie, Jamie's watching this, I love you. And there was this other chick named Shayla. She was pretty cool, but everybody else, <laughs> get away from me, right? But I was saving up for my freedom number. And here's another thing. I'm glad that I had this conversation with this gentleman when I did. I used to work at a bank, right? My last nine to five job was at a bank. And there was this customer that would walk in all the time. His name was Antonio. And every time Antonio came in, I would look at his accounts and it would just have like so many different accounts, like 10, 15, 12 different business accounts. And I was always in my head wondering like, what does Antonio do? But then he sat down at my desk, he needed some assistance. And one of his accounts were called uh, Wildcat something right? Wildcat something. And I was like, Wildcat, does this happen to have anything to do with Kentucky? The Kentucky Wildcats? Because I'm from Kentucky. If you don't know, I'm from Lexington, Kentucky, University of Kentucky, right? He said, oh, really? Yeah. The Wildcat business is for some commercial real estate that I own in Kentucky. Boom. We bonded off of that commonality right there. So, each and every other time he came in, he would always come by, even if he didn't need anything that I could help him with. And he would check my hand and be like, hey. And then he would keep track with sports and stuff. Hey, did you, did you see the Wildcats? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, I saw him. We, we won, we lost, whatever. Whoop -de -whoop. Then one day I asked Antonio to, to go out to lunch because I wanted to ask him any advice that he had to give me because I had already made the decision to fire my job on April 1st, 2016. First of all, when Antonio did, he tried to talk me out of my decision, right? And this is really, really, really key. This is why you need to make the decision because everybody is going to try to talk you out of it. And the people that try to talk you out of it, they're not doing it because they want to block your goals or block your blessings. They're doing it because they want you to be safe and they and they may care about your situation right so antonio he was trying to talk me out of it but once he saw that i had already made the decision the number one thing that i got from antonio was to go and get as many credit cards as possible before i actually fired my job and this one was huge right here because he was like well since I already see that you've made the decision, what's your savings like? I told him what my savings was looking like. He was like, okay, save up some more money. What's your credit score like? 
And I was like, what does my credit have to do with anything? My credit was very high at the time. I told him my credit score. He was like, okay, you have a good credit score. Go get as many credit cards as possible. The reason he told me to do this was not to use the credit cards, but he said, if you are out here as an entrepreneur, if you're out here is what I like to call a hunter. Entrepreneurs were hunters. We eat what we kill. Nobody feeds us, right? You got to go and get it each and every single day. He said, if you need funding, no bank is going to mess with you for a minimum of two years. He said, no bank is going to mess with you for two years until you either have two years of quote unquote business life or until you're showing that you have a considerable amount of revenue coming in. So he was like, go and get credit cards now. So God forbid, in case you fall on your ass, you have these credit cards to where you can land on your back pocket and you won't, you can at least finance your life until you figure out something financially for yourself. And here's the thing about a credit score also. A credit score, it can always be repaired if it drops. He was like, if you do something crazy and, and mess up your credit, you can get it back right, especially once you start making some money and then you can basically accelerate in the recovery of your credit score, right? So that was something big that he gave to me. So I went and I got a whole bunch of credit cards too. I might've got like maybe five or six credit cards just in case. But the freedom number thing though, this is something that I did not understand until I made the decision to fire my job. I was in the car with my best friend one day and look, I thought that this guy had it all figured out. Like I thought he was way more successful than what I was at the times because I stayed in a little small apartment, one bedroom, one bathroom apartment. And this dude, he, he had just bought a house and he had a nice car and he had a, a motorcycle. And then outside of the motorcycle, he had one of those I don't know what the bikes are called, the three-wheel joints. He had one of the three-wheel joints. He always had parties over his house. He always had get-togethers and kickbacks at his house. One of his rooms was a was a studio, like, like a nice studio. He had all this music equipment and he would pay for stuff when we went out. I'm like, man, this dude is up. And we were in the car one day and I was like, yeah, bro. I'm about to fire my job, man, April 1st. I'm, I'm out of here. And I was like, but I got this, I got this number, this, this amount of money that I wanted. I wanted to have a year's worth of salary saved up before I before I fired him, right? But at the time, I only had about twenty thousand dollars saved up. And he looked at me like I was crazy. He was like, You got twenty thousand dollars? I was like, Yeah, I, I only got twenty thousand dollars. He's like, bro, I swear. You you got twenty thousand dollars. I was like, yeah, that that ain't that ain't that much though. Like I, I'm, I was only making about forty thousand dollars at the time at my job. I was like, yeah, but I, but I want to get. I'm trying to get 40, 40 bands saved up though. But I only got like twenty. Like it's gonna take me forever to to save up another twenty. And then he was still like dumbfounded. He was like, bro, you ain't lying right now. You got twenty thousand dollars. And I was like, yeah, you don't. And he said, shit, no, I ain't got nowhere near 20 bands. I was like, you don't got nowhere near no $20,000. And I thought he was up and I was down. And that's when I was like, oh, I'm definitely out of here on April the 1st. And that day I realized that most people's lifestyle is a straight facade. I saw it clear as day. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. I was like, oh, majority of people are not free. Majority of people are slaves to their lifestyle. I'm out of here. And I didn't realize right there that I was way ahead financially than the majority of people even just that I'm just passing in everyday life. Look, that's something that you may not be realizing. Also, you may be doing way better than people that you think are doing way better than you. But right now you just staying down until you come up where most people they trying to look like they up, but they down. Now, has it all been rainbows, bunny rabbits, birds chirping and happiness and big smiles the whole time? No, I've been through some storms. It's definitely been its downs, but just in life in general, there's always downs. But the law of polarity, I'm grateful for the downs because the law of polarity states this. For 
anything that's negative, there's an equal amount of positivity to it. But anything that's positive, there's also an equal amount of negativity to it, right? But we tend to just get what it is that we focus on. So this is positive, negative, it's an equal 50-50. But the things that we view as positive, we're just so focused on that that we cannot see the negativity or the things that we perceive as negative. They typically do have a positive side to it, but we typically don't see that because we're so focused on the negative. And a lot of the, the downs that I've been through on my entrepreneurial journey, I'm so thankful for them because without them, I would not be on the path that I'm on right now, which is I put myself in a position where I've been able to help entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs get results like you see right now. So if you're ready to make more working less online from stuff that you already know, go ahead and click the link down in the description and join this credit at the top community. For weekly coaching from myself, all of my exclusive trainings plus a private community of entrepreneurs all designed to grow your business online. It's only 47 bucks a month to join right now. That's less than a cup of coffee per day. So click the link down in the description to tap in and I'll see you on our coaching call this Wednesday. But I would not want to live any other life than an entrepreneur. And I told myself, April 1st, 2016, no matter what circumstance happens, I have to figure it out. And it all starts with you figuring it out and you knowing what your freedom number is. Because people out here that claim they hate their job so much and go and be a sellout. And this is what I call a sellout. Think about this. A lot of people that are not doing what they want to do in life, they see a successful person, they say, oh, oh, look at him, he's a, he's a sellout. He's a sellout. But I'm like, no, you're the sellout. Because the real sellout, think about this, a sellout, they only do stuff for money. Well, most of the successful people that I know, they don't do it for money. Money is just a byproduct of what they actually do 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 it for but somebody that hates their nine to five and complains about their job and hates their life they wake up at a time that they don't want to wake up to drive a car that they really don't want to drive to go to a destination that they don't want to go to be in a building that they don't want to be to be around people that they don't want to be around and do that for a bare minimum of 40 hours each and every single week and spend money each and every single day of their life, but only get paid 26 times a year. If you haven't realized by now, there's only 26 pay periods in a year. Most people get paid 26 days out of the entire year, but they spend money every single day of the year. How do you think that you're ever going to get by with that? But that's a, that's a topic for another video. But they do this nonstop every day and they do everything that they don't want to do, but what do they do it for? They only do it for money. And they don't even do it for a lot of money. They only do it for a little bit of money. So in my eyes, they're the, they're the real sellout. And I'm like, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't about to be no sellout. And I know if you tapped into my channel, you don't want to be no sellout neither. So do this, pick your date, Realize how much it's going to cost for you to buy back your freedom. Get your credit in order and go get some credit cards. I'm not saying that you're not going to be successful. I know that you're going to because you already made that decision. But just in case stuff gets rough, you have something in your back pocket instead of falling down on nothing and get to it. Start strategizing and outside of strategizing and outside of ideas, execution decide to execute on those ideas because everybody has ideas and all these sellouts have ideas too but they don't do anything with them because they don't make the decision to execute on them and they just live miserable and they just take life to be what it is and they don't think that they have any power to control anything now you got the power out here the world does not just happen you make what happens in your own world happen so go ahead and click the link down in the description if you want to tap into the community. And I'll see you on our coaching call this Wednesday. Go ahead and check out this video right here for a strategy on how you can create a digital product in one day and make a bare minimum of $100,000 with it. It's crowded at the top.